Now, Sam Edmund, what what's going on? Tell us what's the what's the issue around AFLW and the pre-game formalities that across the weekend were going to be observed. It is the Indigenous round in AFLW, yep. and then the overlay of the minutes silence for the Queen's passing. Yeah, so it's a bit. Well, there was a big acknowledgement last night. First of all, the Queen's passing at the MCG for the AFL game. A slightly smaller scale minute silence will take place tonight for Collingwood and Fremantle. I'm told, but. They had a minute silence at the AFLW last night, uh, Icon Park, Western Bulldogs and Fremantle. Now it's Indigenous round in the AFLW in round three and round four, which has obviously uh, led to a situation whereby the AFL proceeded. They had some feedback from AFL clubs that perhaps this wasn't going to be a thing that was going to go down well, and then they went ahead with the minute silence last night. Now what that prompted was that the person who was performing the welcome uh, to country to withdraw from that game. So the welcome to country did not take place for an Indigenous round match. The AFL then uh, had more feedback from clubs and they communicated to the clubs last night. I've got this piece of communication in front of me to the club CEOs and football managers to say um, that uh, round three and four of the AFL W season seven are Indigenous rounds. All existing plans to respect and honour Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples will proceed as planned. The planned minute silence in recognition of the passing of Queen Elizabeth II will not proceed in any further AFLW matches this round. So um, clearly the AFL have got some feedback, some strong feedback from the clubs and their players that this was not something they should proceed with and they've seen fit to abort, Jared. So there'll be no minute silence for the Queen in AFLW games this weekend. That's that's so interesting, uh, which I, I would need to... Um I would need to do some more work. But it felt last night very natural that the Welcome to Country, which has become such a, a focus during the final series, beautiful part of what's been added, and then the natural acknowledgement of the Queen's passing as Australia's head of state. They, they, they worked beautifully. And yeah. then and then Delta so Goodrum steps in and sings the yeah. anthem. So could they have done both? The AFL thought they could. They could celebrate, I guess, the leadership of a, of a woman who had been in charge for 75, 76 years, separate to the fact that stirred up social media big time in the last 24 hours and everyone wants to have a say on it and after a while in this cabbage you already realise the yeah. touch points so, so I'm not I leaning one have, way or the other I wouldn't other have realised that they were mutually exclusive well, the, the feedback from some people is that surely where colonialism has been pretty much has pretty much destroyed Indigenous culture, this is some people's beliefs, ridiculous to have a minute silence for the monarchy during a round designed to celebrate Indigenous culture. Now, that's the feedback from some quarters of society. Others say the exact opposite. And the AFL have just seen fit on this occasion to listen to the feedback from clubs and they've, they've pulled back. Right. Yes, yeah. Curious case. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, do you want to play with a little more trade material and we'll get uh, Kane and Luke's thoughts and then we'll delve into tonight's game? Yeah, let's have a look at the trade front. I, um, I'll i just scroll down to my notes here now, Jared. I think Luke Jackson, so Melbourne's season ending as it did last night, uh, clearly the picture starts to become a little bit clearer here. So exit meetings for all the Melbourne players coming up next week. The expectation is still very much that he is headed for the Fremantle Football Club. The club will sit down with him, Simon Goodwin detailed it last night, and, and try to seek an an answer, or at least a, a formal answer from Luke Jackson on his plans. Of course, if Fremantle win tonight, we might have to wait again, given that, that, that there's a respect shown to clubs who are still in the competition. But uh, they're non-committal on Brodie Grundy, but we know they've got an active interest in Brodie Grundy, of course. So if Luke Jackson goes, you would think Brodie Grundy comes in, notwithstanding the fact that Geelong also have an interest there. We've spoken about Jacob Hopper and Tim Taranto. The seven-year deals offered to them both by Richmond. I think they will get there. History says they will get there. Um, it's just a matter of what those trades look like. Luke Bruce signed an extension yesterday, a, a, a player who again stays loyal to Hawthorne, so he was contracted for next year anyway. He's added another year onto the back of that. Always in trade conversations is Luke Bruce. He knocked back the move to GWS um, at the last minute this time last year. And then there's Todd Goldstein, who three or four or five months ago was most definitely leaving North Melbourne. A lot has changed at that football club since then. The veteran Ruckman was good this year. He adds another year onto his deal, so he goes around again. Just coming back to Hawthorne, Jack Gunston still weighing up an offer to stay at the Hawks versus a move to Brisbane. So Hawthorne having to be really patient with Jack. He just needs time. He hasn't told them what he wants to do yet. Dan McStay, as we know, gone to Collingwood. So they've been sniffing around Jack Gunston. Billy Frampton's going to Collingwood. We keep hearing Bobby Hill. Tom Mitchell wants to get to Collingwood as well. So if all this works, Brody Grundy would have to move to make it possible. And that's why they're all intertwined. Chad Wingard comes up each and every year at this stage. No reason he doesn't stay. No conversations 
Lions around him. And then we get to the wait and sees, the junior Riolis of the world, Jake Lloyd, a free agent at Sydney, another one in the in the waiting basket. Josh Dunkley we've spoken about at length as well. So junior Rioli, torn from moving, moving from West Coast to Port Adelaide. Jake Lloyd, a free agent at Sydney, just wants to get the season done before he discusses what he wants to be shocked if he went elsewhere, given all the, the history at that particular football club. So there's a lot still to play out. And then there's a small matter that came uh, dropped on us a little bit earlier on with uh, perhaps some interest in Cozzy Pickett as a, at the Melbourne Footy Club. So it feels like we're going into a trade period, Kane, that, that's going to cross the threshold. We've sort of um, culturally moved closer and closer towards movement as the the limitations on salary caps and the, the COVID years put a pause to that. But it looks like... Um, th- this will this will spin wildly, mm. I think. Yeah, and we've re- referenced Geelong a couple of times this morning, but um, you'd be foolish to think that Richmond aren't looking at what Geelong have done and going, okay, well, rebuilds, they're not that uh, exciting and they're pretty boring. You've got to be quite patient to have a savage rebuild. So you sort of rebuild on the run. When you've got a good draft pick, you take it, and, and Richmond have done that. But when you get the opportunity to welcome in players in their prime, you do that. And that's how Geelong have mm. defied the equalisation model. And there'd be other clubs doing the same. You know, Carl Amon moves out from Port Adelaide. They'll get a pick back. What can they do with that pick to, to shore up their their situation? They're confident on Josh Dunkley. They'll, they'll be start the Isaac Rankin one. He's going to be huge as well. And yep. I guess how ferocious, Sam, um, clubs want to negotiate. Like if, if you're Adelaide and Gold Coast, that deal should be done now. Don't you think? Like there should be an agreement. I know the trade period is not open. Yeah. But there should be an agreement in place that first morning trade period it opens. Bang! This deal is done, and then you can look to do other things. But there's still a reluctance to do that, and perhaps still a little bit of immaturity that these deals mm. will still take into the last half an hour. What's the point in that? Yeah, I agree with you. It'd be nice if it happened. I mean, clearly the first round draft pick has to be on the table for, for someone like Isaac Rankin. And the Suns are scorned over the fact that he wants to leave. So again, don't expect them to just roll over meekly with this one either. Um, but I would have thought, given Isaac Rankin's quality and promise as a player, then Adelaide would play ball and, and offer the compensation required. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what Geelong do from here, Jared. I think, given that Jacob Hopper they are into, they've clearly chosen their own ceiling for him and they weren't going to break the bank on that. It might be a similar situation with Brody Grundy, who we know Geelong are into as well. I just wonder now where they turn their attention to Geelong, the serial topper-uppers, and they do it so, so well. So if we've got players like Higgins moving on, Dalhouse moving on, how will they look to regenerate? I wonder if Ollie Henry comes into play. The brother, of course, of Jack, who um, is still unsigned at Collingwood. Dan McStay coming in, had already lost his spot in the side and was clearly weighing up his future. I wonder if Geelong attempted to make a play for the brother, Ollie Henry, going forward as well. Okay, let's just close out this trade. So the, the Josh Dunkley scenario... We still wait. So it's a been torturous one. We, we speak about it each and every time. So we know that Port Adelaide's offer is very, very good. We know that Brisbane have got an indicative offer in front of him as well. And we know that the Western Bulldogs have been in negotiations with him now for several months and desperately want him to stay. Why hasn't he given an answer? We can only speculate. We were coming back early to the sensitivities in, in regards to clubs who were still in the finals race. Is there anything to look into the fact that Brisbane are playing deep into this final series and we still don't know Josh Dunkley's future? Would it surprise if Josh Dunkley nominated Brisbane? I don't think it would be, to be honest. And we know he's got a link there. He's got a link to Port Adelaide or, or the city of Adelaide. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a watch at the moment and the dogs are none the wiser as of this morning. It'll be a lively week whenever we ring the trade bell, I am sure.